Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Shawnee Coliseum. Just under nine minutes to play before the El Reno boys tip off against the Shawnee Wolves in the consolation finals of the Shawnee tournament. El Reno wearing their dark blue road uniforms with the gray accents and white piping. Shawnee wearing their white home uniforms with the blue trim. El Reno has faced Shawnee once in the regular season uh, prior to the Christmas break, and they won that one in a game that was a little closer than the score indicated. A couple of lineup changes that may not be new to most of our viewers, but if you're a Shawnee fan joining us or you're joining us for the first time as an El Reno fan, a couple of roster updates. Gavin Williams, the sophomore, now wears zero. Jaden Robinson, the junior, is wearing 44. And a quick review of the lineup. Gavin Williams, Carter Roman knows, Deontay Washington, Matt Topai, Dominic Havern, Vince Walker. Vince has been out the last couple of days with, a, uh, with an illness. Not sure if I don't expect him back today, but I guess he, he could be. I think we're actually expecting him for the uh, Kingfisher game on Tuesday, the pink out game. Josiah Ravellis. Evan Romano's Rossi Harjo, Cole Strong, Jonathan Reed, Jacob Robertson, Trey Davis, Connor Stevens, James R Ravellis, and Jaden Robinson. Had the head boys basketball coach is Rodney Hayden. He's also the director of athletics. He's assisted by Tyler Hill, Briar Workman, Gavin Beavers, and Fred Slaughter. Managers are Raylan Kuba, Michael Woods, and Michael Lumpmouth. The athletic trainers Alex Bray, high school principal Tim Pounds, and superintendent of El Reno Public Schools for the next few months, Craig McVeigh, as he is on the final leg of his farewell tour, and although he's going to be taking uh, retirement by title, he'll still be around. He's he's not one to sit sit on the couch and, and do nothing. <laughs> and we we welcome Miss Patty to our broadcast today. So if you don't know who Miss Patty is, you're missing. <laughs> There's a huge hole in your life that you don't even know about. So make sure you come out and. Uh, support the Indians. We'll be at home on Tuesday for the Kingfisher game, which is the pink out game in support of Coach Kendra Kilpatrick from Stillwater High School. She's fighting breast cancer. So come out for that game. We are on the road next Friday uh, to uh, face uh, the Dell City Eagles. Expect the boys to have their hands full. Dell City ranked number one in 5A on the boys' side and an opportunity for the uh, girls to correct those errors that they made. And ultimately against Dell City, they dropped that game in what was... Um, unfortunately, a poor shooting performance. Um, just could not get the ball to go in the hole, and it's, I think, the nature of the nature of the beast sometimes. Right, and certainly something that Dr. Naismith contemplated when he nailed the first piece baskets <laughs> to the wall of the That's gymnasium. Right. And as always, my name is Zach Morgan. I'm voice of the Indians and the Lady Indians. And joining us as often as he can, and not often enough, is uh, the brains behind the beauty, Kurt Parker. We welcome him as our color analyst, a state championship winning basketball coach, dating back to the days of six-on-six six contests uh, for girls. So he, he coached in six-on-six, six, he coached in five-on-five, five, Yep. and now works in the district helping uh, make, make our, our classroom teachers better. And if they're better, our students are better, our administrators are better. And the world made a better place because of the efforts of Kurt Parker. So, Kurt, we welcome you. We thank you for joining us as always. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, I'm excited to watch the boys. Yesterday, they got to actually play somebody that is their age. Uh, we've got a very young team, as we've talked about many times, and they were against a JV team. But yet, when you look at the roster, uh, as far as age goes, it was pretty comparable and we won by 28. So I think that needs to tell El Reno Nation something. Uh, Coach Hayden has got a really good team on the horizon. They have taken their lumps and their bruises this year, but they are never out of a ball game. Now, you know, Dell City was the exception to the rule, but still, uh, you and I talked about that. Um, even though they were down 30 at one point in time, they fought back. They got back within, I think, 18 or 19. Uh, have come back from 20 and 30 
uh, different times this year uh, in the Anadarko tournament specifically, and it's just they're never out of a ball game. They don't. There's no quit in our boys, and and I'm very excited about uh, what's on the horizon. I'm excited about the playoffs. They will be depending on where they go, and typically uh, the higher seed of the uh, the two teams determines where people go. Um, of course, in 5A, 6A, it's divided. The girls go one way and the boys go one way. Yes. Whereas small school, uh, it is definitely determined by the higher ranked team. Yeah. The, 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 the better of the boys or the girls in smaller Correct. schools are going to get the more favorable draw. Correct. And then the, the benefit of, of being in that situation, even if you're not the better team on the scoreboard, you're going to rely on the talents of your uh, counterparts, you know, if you're on the guys' team and the girls are better, they're going to get you a better draw. Absolutely. If you're the guys are better, they'll get you a better draw. So, yeah. what have you. But, but of course, you know, as you mentioned, in 5A, 6A, we split the state. Last year, girls went east, uh, sort of northeast, yes. and guys went uh -huh. west, southwest, down to Lawton. Right. We're about, That's we're correct. just under just under three uh, in the warm-up period. So, um, and girls play tonight at seven, so there's going to be a substantial gap. So, if you, if you are on the, the monotony of Saturdays, you're grocery shopping and preparing for spring cleaning and doing laundry and all those things that we can't keep up with during the work week. The good news is you've got plenty of time to get that done and then come out to Shawnee tonight to support the ladies where they're going to take on the Lady Broncos of Mustang High School, uh, a 6A top five team if I recall correctly. So again, Correct. another quality matchup and another big test for uh, the Lady Indians. And then later tonight, at 8.30 is the boys' championship game. Hopefully we'll be around for part of that doing interviews. Um, uh, if, if, uh, if the Lady Indians are able to come out victorious, try to get Coach Douglas and maybe a player up here uh, to talk about their thoughts. And uh, we'll bring that to you as we can. Absolutely. Just, yep, just, in, just inside two to play. And we expect Coach Hayden, he switched up the starting lineup occasionally. And I think maybe James against Guthrie. James didn't uh, play any. I, th I thought I saw him sit on the bench in a uh, in a jer in a jersey, and he could have been a could have been a rest period for him, a rest game, and he could have had a, a nagging injury. Sometimes you have an injury that you just generally can play through, and some days you wake up and you just can't get it stretched out, you can't get it loose, yeah. and it may have been one of those. Don't know that story, but uh, El Reno came out victorious, and obviously glad to see Jacob Robertson back after having uh, several of his teeth, I think, knocked loose or yes. displaced in some capacity early in the season, so he missed several weeks why those why those teeth healed and you now see him uh, out there with that uh, bright blue mouthpiece and although you know it's certainly recommended by dentists more and more athletes uh, are wearing mouthpieces mouthpieces in basketball more preventatively than you know yes. for structural purposes yeah and although it does it, it does two things one it helps keep your teeth in place if you take a shot to the face and you will from time to time but there's also some evidence that shows it can actually help eliminate and reduce the chances of a concussion Yes. Uh, caused by your, your head hitting the floor, your teeth banging together. Right. Um, so we're doing everything we can to help keep these, these athletes safe. We're uh, with the clock nearing zero. We're going to prepare for the starting lineups. El Reno will do theirs first. They're going to be the visitors on the scoreboard in their road blues. And uh, Shawnee in their home whites. So we'll bring those to you as they call them. If we have any uh, uh, Shawnee Wolves fans joining us, we thank you. We do not have a roster for your Wolves today, but we'll bring you numbers as we can and names in the event we're able to get them. And I think Kurt's going to try and freehand a few, a few notes, a few things we want to watch throughout the game. You know, El Reno struggled in the past with missed blockouts and some efficiency uh, issues from the free throw line. So Kurt's going to try and track some of that for us. And starting tonight, uh, number one, Evan Roman knows, Matt Topai, the uh, senior point guard, I think the only senior in this starting lineup, uh, Dominic Havern, the elder Roman knows, uh, Evan Roman knows, and then of the brothers, uh, James, who plays well above his six foot two, six foot three listing. Uh, looks like they've got him listed at six foot three. Plays well above his his listed height there. And we mentioned earlier about the uh, the anomaly that was the Dell City game. Dell City, in their starting five. There's a chance all five of those are going to go Division One. So certainly a different class of athlete in the, at Dell City right now, and they've been up and down, but an up down for them. Uh, number 11, number 21, 
number three, number 22. And there's one more wolf. He's got his, his shooting top on. When he pulls that, we'll be able to get you that number. And number five are the uh, starting five for the wolves this afternoon. Kurt's working on getting us a couple of names for the uh, lineups of the starting five. And it looks like there's been a technical foul to start the contest. And uh, El Reno will start from the free throw line. And Carter Romanos is going to go one for one on his first look. An administrative technical, so either a dunk in the pregame, which is not allowed in high school, or a uh, numerical error or some sort of circumstance in that situation. But in any event, El Reno is going to start... 2-0. They're also going to start with the basketball and the possession arrow in favor of the Indians. So Carter Romanos to inbound. Dominic's going to take the ball from him and we're off and running. Great look to Carter. Squares up. Attacks with his right hand from the left side. Misses, but he gets his own rebound and up and in. So four points for the young freshman to start this one. And El Reno out to a 4-0 lead early. And Dominic's going to get called for a hand check. And uh, his team's first, his first. Coach Hayden doesn't love it, but uh, eliminate the hands and you eliminate the possibility for that call. And Shawnee to inbounds. And El Reno up in their press early. And that ball thrown right to Dominic Haver in the lefty layup. Can't get it to fall. Evan nearly poked it loose. Dominic nearly poked it loose. Evan does poke it loose. We'll see if he can finish at the rim with the left. And he does. So 6 nothing now the lead for the Indians. And Shawnee... Just 33 seconds into the contest is going to take their first timeout. A 30-second timeout called by the Wolves. El Reno out to a 6-0 lead early. One team foul for each. The first uh, team foul for El Reno called against Dominic Havern. And then the team foul against Shawnee is a dead ball administrative technical foul in some capacity. We'll, uh, we'll try and figure that out, but we are opposite the scores table, so I don't, I don't have a score. I can ask what the... Game plan was, and we've got names here for uh, number 11. Looks like Morris, 22 is Wicks, 33 is Orange. And I'll let Kurt bring you the rest of those. Possibly Bishop for number 5. And El Reno out to an early 6 nothing lead, having some success in the press break early. Absolutely. So. This press gave Ardmore... Uh, not Ardmore, Anadarko, all they wanted. And we came back from the 28 deficit. And Shawnee on the board, 3 nothing. I'm sorry, 6-3 rather. And really, that's the first offensive look for the Wolves. Skip past the toe pie in the corner. A little bit off target. He couldn't tee that one up. He wanted to shoot that one. It was a little bit off target. He's going to reset the offense. High-low pass to Revelis. It threw a double team. Can't get that one to finish, but batted around and finally secured by the Wolves. And a and great job by Dominic Cavern sitting in the pocket of the intended, uh, the intended ball handler there. And he didn't foul. He sat in his lap and he distressed and harassed and made it just quite unpleasant for the uh, Wolf ball handler. He's going to turn that over. And it was last touched by the Wolves, but the Wolf bench not loving the call. El Reno to inbounds right in front of the Shawnee bench Carter to inbound, and they've run running a double high stack. Good job clearing Evan out over the top, and then Dominic able to step back and retrieve the pass. Good look by Dominic, but a long way to make that pass, Kurt. Correct. I think if he if he takes yeah. one more dribble and cuts that distance down, he can cover six, seven feet on a dribble. If he cuts that distance down by a third, which he can do in one bounce, I think that pass a little. That's a long way to throw a bounce pass. Yes. A great backside seal. He got himself one on one. Revelish in traffic, yes, up and in. Yeah. So James on the board. James with that baby hook is very hard to stop at six foot three. We lost our scoring software. We'll bring that up here for you in a second. El Reno leading eight to five into the front court. Come the Indians. The dribble handoff. Topai tees it up long three. No good. That's going to be a held ball by virtue of being wedged in the basket. Six oh nine to play. El Reno leading. 8-5. to five. El Reno's had some success with the press, but when the press is broken, they're getting beaten transition. So Correct. they're going to have to make some uh, adjustments. 
to make sure they're back in transition. Eight to five, the Indian lead, unable to capitalize there. Transition three by Shawnee, no good. Revelis blocked his man out, but it was a long rebound. And now tied at eight apiece. Shawnee converts that three, so. Great job and, by Dom. And Dominic goes coast to coast, and he lays that off the glass. Dom harassing that ball handler. Nice aggressive play, even with one foul. Quick three by Carter, no good. And Evan almost. Almost, almost talked himself out of it, yeah. didn't he? Uh, you know, he, <laughs> had, he had a great angle on it, uh, uncontested for the tip in, but I like it. If you're not confident you're going to be able to finish that in the air, come down, reset, go up with two hands, lay off the glass. Elrina leading. Correct. 12-8, 520 to play in the first quarter. Good ball movement by the Wolves and gets the Indian defense scrambling. So they reversed that ball twice, the Wolves did. Got the El Reno defense scrambling, and they're able to knock down the 15-foot jump shot. Back cut by Revelis and Shawnee with a deep man on the help side. So good decision not to throw it to James. And Carter gets the one-on-one -on -one matchup on the, on the drive. And he's, that was a little bit reminiscent of what Pete Maravich used to call the hesitation shot where yes. the shot blockers and those defenders are trying to time it to high point. And Correct. Carter actually hung up in the yep. air. It was started on his way down and released it right before he hit the ground. So it's going to throw off the timing of the defender. And draw on the foul. Pete Maravich made that shot famous um, long before the advent of the three-point line. And three for three is the young man on the night so far from the free throw line. That's the second team foul for the Wolves. That foul charged against number 21. His first. Sean Ebel substitute. Number five checks out. And the second Carter Romano's free throw is good. So El Reno back to a two-point lead. And a 30-second timeout called by Coach Aiden. Good timeout here. I think he's going to make some adjustments to the way they're covering on the back end of this press and maybe, may, maybe even make some adjustments in the front half of the press to avoid those long runouts that Shawnee's had some success with. Correct. And I believe, if unofficially, I think uh, Morris, number 11 for Shawnee, has seven points. And it seems the offense runs through him. Yeah. Uh, much like the offense runs through right now um, through Carter. Yes. Uh, for us. So I'm sure Coach Hayden uh, let them know that, they, that uh, he is uncomfortable when he dribbles. He yeah. wants to be a spot-up shooter. Yeah. And so run him off the line, make yeah. him – Make him work uh, for He's it. predominantly left-handed, and we made him go right a second ago. Yeah. So uh, for Force him right, force we'll him to put it on the floor. That. Yes. And to make him shoot. And he's a, he's a long-range shooter, but make him shoot outside what he's comfortable with. Yes. Extend that range. Good job by Dom, but, he, but good double ball screen by Shawnee. Correct. And that point guard used it effectively. Yeah. It's going to be a hand check foul on the floor. Who are they going to get? They're going to get uh, Evan. Evan. His first team's third. Yeah. And that's lack of communication. It is. On the Indians' part, that we need to talk with one another. We need to let Dom know when screens are coming. And again, number 11, nice nice take by number 11, Morris. Yeah, El Reno got isolated there, had no help on the backside. So I didn't see how the, I didn't see the defensive rotation prior to that drive. I was looking off of it. Be curious to know if it was a missed rotation or somebody was out of position. And a good job by James to draw the foul. He got tripped Excellent up and job. he takes a header, rolls out of it. Mm -hmm. Good call by the officials. And a good job by James to force that contact, right? Correct. The, good cover by Shawnee initially, but... James is a lot quicker off the dribble than he looks like if you pass him in the street. He doesn't look like he's got a real explosive first step, but can be a tough cover in the front court, especially if you get him isolated. And if you can isolate him in that 15-foot range, mm -hmm. you know, where he can go left, he can go right. And a no-look pass from Carter to James. And then Rossi Very knocks nice. down the long two. Rossi Harjo checks in, and shortly after he makes his entrance, he gets in the scorebook. El Reno, uh, El Reno. Shawnee had scouted. El Reno's inbound play right there, and the guys did a great job of uh, they had added a transforming wrinkle. on the fly. Yeah, they added a wrinkle. Great no look pass. Good look. Trey, Trey Davis needs to go up strong. Can he fight through the Attaboy. contact? He does. He it's nearly lost job. it. Able to handle it, and that's where those that big six four height, six three yes. height. He can get up over the top, lay that ball high up off the glass, and his target is the top corner of that square. Correct. Where the where, you know, the, where the square edges meet at the top, that, that's your target. You can get it high up off the glass. You can get it over any blocks. Yeah, good look, bad pass. 
Yes. I think he, uh, James had the high seal. Topai tried to make a, a, str uh, a pass on a string. Yes. He lobbed that up, throw it up over the top, let yeah. James hold that seal and then go catch that pass, much like a tight end Correct. sealing off a, a pass in the flats. Yeah. Now the other thing, if our uh, postman would have got the hip into him and made more of an angle, uh, that could have been a little bit more uh, higher lob toward the rim. It's going to be a two-shot foul. I think they're going to get Evan for his second. Yes. I, I like what Coach Hayden has done. Um, right now, they, their postman, their starting postman, number uh, 21, Shaw, picked up his second foul. And he immediately, the foul, uh, the moment that foul was uh, given, assessed to Shaw, Trey Davis was inserted into the lineup. Yes. So now they've got to deal with a double low post without their main post. Exactly. Defender. That Shawnee free throw up and good. El Reno leads 18-13, 2.56 to play in the first. Second, no good. Great block out and fundamental rebound by yes. Trey Davis. Went I up like with two that. hands. One hand rebound where you slap the ball coming down. They're pretty to look at, but fundamentally you go up, you grab it with two hands, you bring it down, keep it at your chin, and find the guard. And a great... Drive to Excellent pass job. to lay Young up. man goes up with his left hand. If you're a young player watching, yep. if you're a post player, if uh, you could shoot with your left hand and you're right-handed, that is going to make you that much more effective. And Carter set that up by his three or four yes. layups early in the game. Now Correct. he's drawing two. He's drawn the help side defender on that. And Trey Davis knew where he needed to be to find open space. And he's going to go to the free throw line. And um, after since, Trey, yeah, go ahead. Since the game with Dell City, when Trey was bounced around quite a bit, we've seen the young man play with much more confidence and uh, be more assertive. Absolutely. When he wants the ball and when he goes up. Yeah, D lots of D1 talent on that Dell City team, and he realized, you know, we got we got B on the clock, but I can see, I can go toe for toe, I can go blow to blow, yeah, uh, blow for blow with these guys. You got nothing to lose, so. Right. And after two, you know, two or three more off seasons in the uh, El Rio Strength Program, Coach Deaton and Coach Klein working with those with the athletes, getting them stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, he's certainly going to be a headache at any level of play, yeah. uh, but certainly within 5A. 0 for 2, the young man goes, though. Needs to work on the free throw efficiency a little bit. Again, all things we can work on in the gym. Correct. Lots of drills for that. and Great help by Topai. Another great take by number 11. Again, Absolutely. the offense is running through Morris. Carter toes the line. Can't I get guess. it to fall, but a great rebound by James. Go right back to Carter. And then Topai's going to shoot it in rhythm off the Carter pass. No good. Two great looks by the Indians and very unselfish play right now. Great help, help side. But Absolutely. We actually had too much help side. Now we're scrambling a little bit. <laughs> And very, very little where you hear somebody say, we got too much help side. Great pass by Rossi. Good decision by James. He understood he had the mismatch. Just got away from him. Great run down Great by Trey. by Trey. Yes. Absolutely. And you saw, you saw Rossi run to the front of the basket. Yes. And then Trey timed that. Run by block. Those were made famous probably, I think, originally by LeBron James. Yes. At least for this generation. Michael Jordan had his share of them. Scotty Pippen. And they're going to get a foul here. That. Yep. <laughs> they're going to get Carter for a foul. His second, I believe. No, check that. His first team's fourth. His first. Yeah. Minute 17 to play. 14 fouls apiece. So both teams are going to have to be cognizant of, of the uh, personal foul situation as we near halftime. Mm -hmm. El Rio's already got one seated with two. Shawnee's going to pull it back out between the circles. Boy, they're running all kinds of bells and whistles to get 11 open. They yes, ran him off a double staggered screen there. Great crossover by James, and he's going to draw the foul to the free throw line. Nope, they're going to get him on the floor. Good call. Only the fifth team foul. But again, the transition game for the Indians is stressing that Shawnee defense. Yes. The Shawnee defense, for the most part, is, is holding its own in the half court game, but struggling in the, in the transition game. And so these, the team fouls are going to start playing in favor of the Indians. They'll get some free throws out of it. Rossi, the three, knocks Excellent it down. Job by Rossi. Fan Spotted up, hands ready, feet ready. Great Fan job. Fantastic job by the senior reliever. 
And I'll tell you what, from a defensive perspective, if you could have Dominic Havard and Rossi Harto on the floor at the same time, you've got some confident ball handlers that it's going to be hard to disrupt them. Yes. But also, when you bring Rossi on, you can sit Dominic and not lose anything. You're going to have the same uh, leadership and the same experience. Yes. There's just really on the roster in your starting lineup, there's only room for one point guard. You know, they, they carry the position number of one. There's really only one spot for a one in the roster. Yes. Excellent defense by Trey right there. He yeah. altered that yeah. shot as well. Six on the six Went seconds. Strong did not foul. Great Arena's kick out. And score. Another three by Rossi. No good. And that's going to end the quarter. At the end of the first, El Reno leads by 10, 23-13. You're watching uh, Indian basketball in the Constellation Finals of the Shawnee Tournament. We'll be right back. .com right now for more information. Team up with Pioneer iVideo and start streaming the most popular TV shows and movies from your favorite devices today. Download the iVideo app and start watching anywhere in your home using Pioneer Internet. Each package includes free high definition and cloud DVR features like video on demand, restart TV, and replay TV, just in case you forget to record a program. Visit gopioneer.com for more details and compatible devices. Some restrictions apply. one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maple's Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back. And we're back from the quarter change. Eight minutes on the clock, El Reno leading by ten. Five team fouls for the Wolves, only four for the Indians, but the Indians with a little bit of foul trouble. Carter Romanos has two fouls, I believe. Somebody else has two fouls. And Rossi's going to lead the offense to James. High-low pass to Trey Davis. Two bounces off the glass and in. Excellent job. Great Trey move by the young man. up strong today, and he's putting it high and soft off the glass. Up strong, high and soft off the glass. Any young post player watching? You can figure out that that is the way to play at a post position. Yep. And early preparation with his feet getting ready to catch the ball. And great harassing defense. And you'll hear coaches all the time say, get your hands up. It's not so much that. It's get your hands out. Get in passing lanes. That's exactly what El Reno did. They forced Shawnee to have to throw that ball quickly into a very tight window. And it was Correct. knocked out of bounds off the feet of the Shawnee postman. I'll be, and the only thing that makes that Trey Davis post move any better is if he can get there in one dribble instead of two. Right, see, that second dribble right there is going to get knocked yes. loose. Rossi secures that. He's going to hit the 17-foot step back and nice knocks it down. by Rossi right there. 27-13 now the Indian lead. And Trey Davis, he'll get in the gym, and he'll work on those post moves all summer long. He's got the offseason in the spring and then all summer. Uh, and then the in, end of the fall next year to work on those post moves. And he will probably be playing AAU ball against oh, very high-level teams. Exactly. Great pass. Trey Davis going to take it. Entry. That is a hard shot that to finish, Kurt. That is a Kurt. hard shot. Yes. That full speed from 12 feet. And that's, it looks like a layup from our angle, but that's actually a jump hook at full speed off the glass. Yes. That's a heck of a finish by the young man. Yeah. This is officially, I think he has 10 points. Yeah. This is a 60-second timeout. We're going to take it with him. El Reno leading 29-13 in the second quarter, 644 to play. Always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. We're back from the break. El Reno leading 29-13. Got 
got Jacob Robertson on the floor now, and, and uh, Coach Hayden has been giving Jacob a little playing time here and there, trying to get him worked back into the lineup after uh, his long delay since the Hera tournament. Exactly, and, and ultimately, yeah, he suffered that injury in the Hera tournament. Three-point basket by Shawnee. And although you want to jump right into the lineup, when you've missed that conditioning, you, even, if, even if you feel like you can play, your fundamentals break down, your decision-making breaks down, your mental error rate goes up, so you limit those minutes. You make them situational minutes, an opportunity to see success, and then you work on conditioning in practice, after practice, in the weight room, those sorts of things. Can't finish. But a great run by, by Evan. Absolutely. Excellent play by the junior. He's playing with two fouls. Mm -hmm. I liked what I saw uh, Jacob doing just then. And again, that's what you were talking about, the timing and this, that, and the other. Uh, Trey put up the shot. Yeah, that's his third. Missed it, and Jacob had the offside board. And uh, just didn't quite get it, but he knew exactly what he needed to do. And again, that getting in, that repetition, and uh, being out for what? Uh, about six weeks. About six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Good to have a young man back on the floor for us. Yep. That foul, Evan Roman knows his third. Great look, and he read it perfectly. Yes. But to Shawnee's credit, they threw it into a place that he just couldn't get it shut down in time to avoid the foul. And great job by Trey Davis to challenge the shot, yes. force the Indy, the uh, Wolf rather, to change his shot. But an, uh, an offensive rebound giving up results in. And, uh, Beautiful you know, pass yep. right there by Matthew. He realized that he had two post guys converging, split yep. them, and a nice little dish to Trey Davis who finished strong. And good court vision by the young man because when you're in that situation, Kurt, you and I know, you're running to a spot that's going to be open, not that's open. You have to know where that spot's going to be. Yes. Because you're, when you get there, you're actually guarded. But that's where film work and understanding of de defensive principles, and you know if they're doing their job correctly. Yes. And Shawnee's a, is, Shawnee is a well-coached basketball team. So Excellent you would expect job. them to be in the right spot. Excellent yeah. job, Jacob, running the floor. Uh, any young post that's out there watching, Run rim to rim, run hard, and you're going to get rewarded. And not only rewarded, but that's 21. Yeah, Shaw. That's Shaw's, Shaw's third, foul. third foul. Absolutely. It's a great job of running the floor by the big fella. He'll go to the free throw line. He'll have to earn it the old-fashioned way. That one's going to be well long no good. Topai's going to check out and checking in for the first time, Jonathan Reed. So you're five on the floor for the Indians. Jonathan Reed, Rossi Harjo, Carter Roman knows. Trey Davis, and Jacob Robertson. Second free throw up, no good. 0 for 2. So El Reno's going to have to execute from the free throw line. Every time they stretch the lead, Shawnee, to their credit, doesn't go away. Correct. Almost a carrying violation by the... Yes. He, and that was almost a major mental error, but a three-point basket out of it. We have got to quit going under the screen with number three. He is deadly from the top of the key, and that's happened twice. I think defensively we try and find an opportunity to run right at him, too. Great pass. Oh, but he threw that one 100 miles an hour, lit just outside. And as they'll say in a few <laughs> weeks, that's ball one. It's the right pass. That's a tough pass to make. It's a long way to throw it. Right. And you've almost got to throw it with enough spin to cook that ball and Basketballs, if you throw them with enough spin far enough, they will curve a little bit. It's not like a baseball where you're going to see a huge drop. You can get them to curve a little bit, but that's a hard pass to make. It's the right look, but that one-handed yeah. pass down the baseline around defense, that's a tough pass. Yes, it is. And again, that timing. Yep. Uh, because he's uh, not been able to practice. Hasn't had a ton of reps. Yeah, if you're Rossi, you got to come to that. You oh, can't yes. wait on that ball. You got to no, go to that ball. You got to win that. Yep, can't lose. You can't lose that battle. Poked loose. Rossi or, uh, Carter makes up for it there. Excellent job. And Carter's going to lead the break. He understands numbers here. Last touch by. Yeah, we're going to. I think uh, he's he's frustrated with himself. Coach Hayden's going to pull him out, give him a chance to settle down. Yes. And we're starting to see those again. Starting to see those mental errors by Jacob go up a little bit. Nothing you can't work through. That's part of the game. Correct. So certainly not the, the start that young man wanted, but still good minutes. And Rossi heads to the bench a little bit hobbled. He's favoring, yes. looks like he's favoring his right foot. He's going to go down and see the, head to the locker room and see the athletic trainer. Almost walking like it was a Charlie horse, but not, not getting the treatment you'd see for a cramp. I'll agree with that. 
Great job by James keeping those hands down and challenging that. And then Carter playing well above his listed height. Yes. And we see him dunk it in practice. We see him dunk it in warm-ups. So that young man can get up and play well above 10 feet. We need to settle down. Yep. And good job. Got the ball in Dom's hands. Not, not, not a good look there by James. That's not a, that's not, that's not his shot. Not a high percentage shot for him. Oh, what does Dominic have to do? What does Dominic have to do? Yeah, uh, I don't know. There was a, a small amount of contact. Dom went up straight up, his and second. Uh, so unfortunate for that. He did the right thing, and I'm sure Coach Hayden is not going to have a problem whatsoever with that except for the fact that it was a three-point play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you're Dominic and if, if, you're, if you're the captain, you look at the official and you, you have that conversation, what do I have to do? What if, I was in position, I, I, I stayed in my space, what else do I have to yeah. do? And ultimately the answer is it doesn't matter what the official tells you. Yeah. You and I know he's wrong, Coach Hayden knows he's wrong, right. Dominic knows he's wrong, and there's probably a chance the official knows he's wrong. Yeah. But so it goes. Coach Hayden's going to take a 60-second timeout. We'll take it with him. We'll be back in just a minute. You're watching Indian Basketball. system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integration. After the timeout, Coach Hayden has used two of his five allotted and Shawnee has used two of their five allotted. 306 to play in the first half. El Reno Jumped out to an early lead, but Shawnee on a 9-0 run right now and has brought the game to within seven by my count, 31-24. And into the front court comes the freshman to Dominic. Looks like Coach Hayden, yep, they're going to try and run a, a, a stagger screen for Jonathan out the top to Dominic. Back to Jonathan. Trey, good defense good by patience. Shawnee to push him off. Yes. But a great job by Trey. He knew he was too low to do much with it. Yes. So he took one dribble to improve his passing angle. Bounce pass to his, his counterpart on the, on the uh, offside low block. And James off the glass with an easy two-handed. Uh, yeah, and James did land. something very, very uh, slight there. But he just took one step forward and made himself visible. And so uh, as a result, two points. 33-24, the El Reno lead back up to nine. Good cover in the open court by James. Not the ideal matchup, but a great cover. He forced the yes. shooter to have to shoot off an inside crossover, a pull-up 15-footer. That's a low percentage shot in anything really other than the NBA and maybe 1% of D1 players. And James is going to get his chance. I think they're going to ring 24 up for that foul. He's hanging his head like they, and that's exactly who they'll get. Jordan Rodriguez, we're being told, his first, the team's seventh. So, And he is the backup post yep. to number 21, Shaw. So credit to the El Reno contingency for getting the ball to the postmen and stressing that low post defense by the Wolves, but continued struggles from the free throw line for the Indians. I don't have their season's shooting percentage, but we'd really like to see that be north of 85%, and I doubt it's there. But one for two goes James, and he's... Opened the lead up back to double digits. A 10-point lead inside two to play before the half. El Reno tra uh, leading by 10. 16 fouls for the Indians. Seven for the Wolves. So, and a three-point basket by 22. And, you know, anytime a shooter knocks down a three and taps their chest, my, ine my immediate instinct is to say, act like you've been there before. Correct. It's your job, right? Nice job by James. And a great and job by James. He has been there before. And he has been there. He makes his basket. He gets back on That's defense. Right. He doesn't thump his chest. He doesn't tap his head. He doesn't throw his fingers up in the air. Correct. What you will see a lot, a great stagger screen by Shawnee to get the shooter open. He can't knock it down. What you will see, for, especially post players, they'll do a lot. And when they're back and running back in transition, they'll, you'll see them point down the floor and they're pointing at that guard saying, thanks for the assist. 
Topai can't get it to go, but see, he got a little bit great offensive rebound. Yes. But he actually started that shot with his back to the basket. Correct. Turn around. So he's airborne having yep. to try and make the adjustments in his head. Exactly. Turn around, get squared up, and either attack the basket or shoot a nice little 10-foot jump shot right, right. there. Right, right. Great offensive rebound, though. 45 seconds on the clock. El Reno leading by nine, 36-27 as we near the second, as we near the end of the second quarter and prepare for the halftime intermission. Pull up three. No good. Great job by Trey Davis. And we can't hear him here, but I guarantee you, Trey saying mine, 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 and, and Matt T and uh, Topai saying yours, yours, yours. And Much Dom is. is saying mine, 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 and he's setting things up for the last 20 seconds. Yes. 15 seconds on the clock. El Reno leading my great ball nice screen. High screen. He's going to try. Oh, nice pass out to Topai. A rhythm three. Excellent Gets job. it to fall. Perfect execution. Excellent play right there by Dom. Five on the clock. Shawnee's going to get one hurried attempt at it. A three over double coverage. Can't get it to go. And to be safe, a rebound by Trey Davis that won't count. But in any event, a 12-point lead in the locker room. Yes. Uh, go the Indians at the yeah, end of the – Right there, that was perfect defense by Dom. He went straight up, and even though the guy fell to try to get the foul, the ref just kind of looked at yeah. him like, son, yeah. Absolutely. nobody knocked you and down. That, and, that, and they've passed on that all game. That's not, that's not like he decided to eat on it yes. or sit on that eat a whistle or sit on that call. So yeah. uh, good discipline by the officials. And Great execution in the last offensive possession and a good challenge. The uh, Wolves had a look at a three, but it was over two. Yes. Indian defenders and then Trey Davis under the basket to prevent a last-minute tip-in attempt. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the uh, halftime break with them. 39-27, the Indian lead. You're watching Indian Basketball on ElRenoIndians.tv. We'll be back in a few minutes. Traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Team up with Pioneer iVideo and start streaming the most popular TV shows and movies from your favorite devices today. Download the iVideo app and start watching anywhere in your home using Pioneer Internet. Each package includes free high definition and cloud DVR features like video on demand, restart TV, and replay TV, just in case you forget to record a program. Visit gopioneer.com for more details and compatible devices. Some restrictions apply. high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help.
it time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Team up with Pioneer iVideo and start streaming the most popular TV shows and movies from your favorite devices today. Download the iVideo app and start watching anywhere in your home using Pioneer Internet. Each package includes free high definition and cloud DVR features like Video On Demand, Restart TV, and Replay TV, just in case you forget to record a program. Visit GoPioneer.com for more details and compatible devices. Some restrictions apply. high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nicks and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. 
Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Halftime period, draw, or halftime intermission rather, drawing to an end as we prepare to start the third period. El Reno leading by 12 in the possession arrow in favor of the Wolves. So Shawnee will have possession to start the third quarter. Evan Roman knows with two fouls, I believe, or with three fouls, sorry. I think Carter's got two, and I, I don't remember if Dominic's got one or two. I think he has one. Yeah, I think he's got one. Yeah. And the first five for the Indians, Matt Topai, Evan Roman knows, Carter Roman knows, James and Dom to start this one. On the floor for the Wolves, numbers 5, 21, 3, 22, and 11. So number five shot the ball well in the first half, and 11, obviously their, their go-to shooter. But good job by Carter sitting in his pocket. He showed help just enough to stop the drive, able to recover. And it's going to be a big ass trying to keep some of these guys in front of you. Good job by Carter, but credit the Shawnee player for putting the brakes on and not drawing the charge. Good ball handling by Matthew right there. We need to slow down. Yeah, a little bit out of sorts. We're a little bit ahead of ourselves. We're seeing the right things, but we're just in such a daggone hurry to get it there. Correct. Transition three, no good. And Shawnee had it, had two hands on an offensive rebound. They couldn't get it together. And James is going to lay it off the glass and in. Excellent job. And a hard James. crash. That's a way to run the floor, young man. Absolutely. As soon as he saw that the ball was secured in the hands of a blue jersey, he took off and ran his lane and he threw that hand up. And sometimes your instinct is to yell, I'm open, I'm open. But the best thing you can do is just throw a hand up and get seen. Don't, don't let the defense know you're back there. Correct. Let your point guard, let your transition guard find you. That's, a, that's an illegal dribble all day, Kurt. Yes. He picked it up. Put two hands on it, put it back on the floor, and then they're going to give him credit for the and one. They were so focused on the contact, they forgot to watch the dribbler. Correct. 29-41, the El Reno lead, 6.48 to play in the third. I could be wrong, but I think we have a game, a regular season game here also later this season. So we're going to yes, become intimately familiar with the folks here in Shawnee. In the front court comes Dominic Havern. Dribble handoff, Evan with it. Carter with it. Looks back to Evan between the circles. They are desperately trying to get James the ball, and they do. We'll see what he's able to do with it. Good recognition of the triple team. Carter in the corner for three. Off the side of the backboard. Kept alive. James puts one, puts the ball on the floor one time off the glass. Good decision. Excellent I think he looked at it and said, I don't like this range. Yes. One bounce is going to get me in close. Correct. Used a shot fake to draw the defender out of position. And a tough shot off the glass. Yes. You generally see those shot clean, but if you, have, if you like the glass, better use the glass. So good defensive rebounding to start the second half for the Indians. We'll see if they're able to continue that trend. Topai tees it up on the back of their Evan pass. Can't get it to fall, but James right, right, right on the spot. The good job by yep. James right and there. And a timeout called by Shawnee El Reno. And Coach Hayden is kind of asking, why wasn't that an and one? Yeah. He said that's the same contact we had down here. Correct. So Shawnee calls a timeout on the back of an Indian run. Yes. El Reno lead up to 15. It's a 60-second timeout, but we're going to stay right here. Tuesday night is the Kingfisher Yellow Jacket game. That's pink out night in support of Coach Kendra Kilpatrick of Stillwater from the girls' side. So wear your pink. Come out and see her if you ordered a oh, 30-second timeout, rather. If you ordered a shirt from Jennifer Hardaway at the high school, make sure you stay in contact with her. I think those orders are probably coming in. Uh, probably Monday would be my yes. guess for a Tuesday ball game. Right. And uh, one, one thing I want to point out, and I know this is one thing that Coach Hayden has probably been uh, preaching to his young team uh, with Dom, the only senior on the floor. 30-45 um, is the score right now. When we came out at halftime, it was 27-39. Yes. So we have not only held the lead, we have added to the yep. lead. And that's something that a young team – uh, seems to have a difficulty with is holding the lead. Yes. And so I'm uh, excited to see them maturing. Yeah. And I think Shawnee's uh, only points came off of the and one that Coach Hayden was asking, why didn't we get the same contact Correct. on that revelous layup? Yes. Going into that Shawnee timeout. Yes. 
Good man-to-man -man defense by the Indians. And good communication by Evan and Matt Topai on yes. that. So it was, it was a it was a, a guard to forward guard to forward uh, L cut, but also there was a screen involved, and so they're going to get Dom on the push, and he did he held. Yep. But before that, uh, and, number three had put his chest in yep. to him, uh, and much Dom like happened in the MacArthur game. Yeah, and Dominic's not going to back down from that contact. No. Rossi checks in. Good job by Rossi to defend the spin. Excellent. That's a, that, Kurt, that's a quick spin. Yes. That, that's fast. That's, that's running back coming through a hole fast, and he's doing it while dribbling the basketball. So credit to that skill that young man's developed. That, that's a hard skill to yes. work on. And 11 off the bounce, and that goes back to what you were saying earlier. He doesn't want to shoot that off the bounce. And right now, number three is a wide body. And since there is arguably no uh, post presence, they are posting him up, which is a great move by the Shawnee coaching staff. Evan goes to the bench. Trey Davis checks in. Trey Davis now assigned to guard number five. And the Shawnee coach frustrated with the officials who continue to just have a conversation with the players. Great job by James to challenge that. Trey Davis understanding his cover. Rossi gambled, and they're going to get, I think, Matt on a push here. And, and that is a result of the Shawnee coach screaming at that official on the baseline. He knew if he didn't put a whistle on something, regardless of right or wrong, that official's more scared of calling a technical foul than he is of getting the call right. And I thought the official may be uh, uh, giving number three a technical, technical yeah. foul yeah. for a flop because nobody was close to him, and the young man fell down. Yeah, and so the Shawnee coach is taking that young man out right now because he was just about to get into it with that official holding the basketball. So the Shawnee coach pulled him out, and now he's got this young man seated at the bench, and he's coaching him up, saying, keep your head. Mm -hmm. They're humans. They're going to make mistakes. You play through it. So credit to that Shawnee coach for keeping that young man. Correct. And that's, that's a player safety thing. Nobody wants to see a fight to sit in a boxing match. Rossi on the putback. Excellent Great job, job by Rossi. Rossi. Way to follow and be that uh, offensive rebounder. And a good job by Carter. He harassed that pass. He mm -hmm. deflected it out of bounds. So Shawnee will inbounds. Are they going to go inline or sideline? Looks like they're going to go sideline with it. And you can still see number three for Shawnee. He's sitting on the bench, but he's tapping his feet. He is irritated. Something happened. I don't know. Something was said. Or caught an elbow. Something happened between the Shawnee's number three and I think uh, Matt for El Reno. And that Shawnee player is irritated. He's still getting coached up. Yeah. Good take. Trey's got to be and Trey's yeah. got to be able as his skill set develops. He's got to work on his ability to cover in the open yeah. court one on one. Yeah, that was an excellent job. Good by job by James. Right there. Great James job by James. Walled off. That's a great job. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what I was that's what I was afraid of. Yeah. A guard's got to come help him there, Kurt. Correct. Yes. That's a good call and and one. It is a good call and uh, and if and if you're exactly what you're saying, when James was dribbling the ball down, uh, you've got to take it, set it up. We're ahead by 17, yeah. or yeah. we're ahead by 17. Yeah. We the lead now 13. We don't have to score yeah. uh, every five seconds. Be smart. Great job to keep that ball alive. And then good job by Matt Topai. Excellent job. He, 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 didn't, he didn't flirt. He didn't bounce around. He put the ball on the floor and he attacked his man. He drew Correct. the foul. Correct. Yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're James bringing that ball up, there was nobody there to help you. you. You've got to ask for help. But if you're the guards, you've got to see it and come help. Yeah, it's like and, you and I were talking about as postmen in a high no, school. Miscommunication. Matthew needed to keep the angle yeah. back for him so he could see him and uh, El Rio's about to catch a technical foul right here yes and that's what these officials are talking about might be worth a timeout by coach Hayden right here but now uh, looks like they he looks like he's going to pull Topi let him calm down Topi was the other young man engaged with Shawnee's number three who's still irritated on the bench and I think these officials recognize they let this get away from them Although, to be honest, I wasn't 
just shocked at how poorly it was officiated. I thought they were doing a heck of a job, to be honest with you. I did too. And Carter's I... called for his second. And that's the fifth team foul on El Reno. One team foul for the Wolves. Great job by Trey Davis not gambling there. And then he challenges that shot. If that shot goes in, that's just a good shot. Yeah, absolutely. Great defense by Trey right there. Yeah, he forced And it. you've got the young man open, but we missed him. A good job by Dom holding the ball. Oh, great roll by up. James. No, that's, that's either and got again, it. That's, we didn't see his numbers. No, I Don't think, give him the ball. If, don't make the pass. If we can reverse that, great challenge by, Trey, by uh, absolutely. Carter there. Absolutely. Right there on that last that last offensive possession. Yes. If we reverse it, then, then then Trey's got that high seal That's and you can right. high low it to him. Yes. I, I think Dom knew he needed to get it to him. Great take right Finish there. Finish the basket. Can't quite get it to go, but a good take by Carter. Yeah. He They're couldn't call. quite get the angle to where he could use the glass, so he had to do a floater right there. And uh, I, I'm not uh, I'm not upset with that take no. by the young man. No, not at all. And again. You know, we have to stop and scratch our head every once in a while and go, he's a freshman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that foul called against Shawnee's number two. Or check that number zero. Second foul on that young man. Second team foul. First free throw by Carter up and good. He's shooting the ball with confidence right now. You like to see that? Yes. And number three, Orange, re-enters. That one rim short. Good piece of coaching there by the yep. Shawnee coaching staff. Uh, getting him out. The young man was frustrated. Good defense and a Excellent backside job. block. Yes. James walled him off, and Trey came from behind to, to block that. And then Rossi tried to stick a hand out and wrangle that rebound down. And I'll tell you what, Carter's doing a heck of a job on number 11 for Shawnee. Shawnee getting every and one in the county right now. Yeah, I thought James, uh, James, I thought Trey did a an excellent job right there. And uh, Maybe you? it was because his hands were spread apart, yeah. but the young man was as straight up as yeah. he could be. He and didn't slap down to his credit. And just the first foul for that young man. El Reno leads by 12, 30, check that 11, 37, 48 now the... Indian lead, 2.40 to play in the third quarter. And Coach Hayden going with a smaller lineup, a more guard-oriented lineup. Rossi's got to be able to hang on to that dribble, though. And he does. He gets a hold of it. By Rossi he, right yeah, there. yeah, he did a good job of jumping on that basketball. And then Coach Hayden, as soon as he saw possession, yeah. called that timeout. It's going to be a 30-second yeah. timeout. We're going to stay right here. And we kept our possession because of we his did. hustle. Absolutely. The possession arrow was in favor of the Indians. You don't want to burn that. You'd like to be able to start the fourth quarter if you can. Correct. With that possession arrow. But and to his credit, he did not give up on the play. And you see that happen. Somebody makes a turnover and they just kind of stop and they're like, get their head down because they made a turnover. He didn't. He immediately got on the floor and, and uh, tied it up. And uh, so we have uh, kept the possession. So great that, job by Rossi. Absolutely. 2.28 to play in third. El Reno leads by 11, but able to retain possession. We'll see what Coach Hayden draws up coming out of this timeout. The question is, you've got, you've got, a, not a, you've got a little bit of a size advantage here with both Trey Davis and James in. And Carter, who can play all five positions. He's tall enough that he creates a matchup problem. We've got Trey at post. Number three was uh, upset because people were shoving on him and he was just doing the same thing to Trey. So I'm going to see Pick it up, how James. interesting Pick it up, James. that's going to be. They're going to get James for a foul there? Are you kidding me? The, the, Shawnee ball, the Shawnee player was on the ground and he stood up from his knees to his feet. And they're going to call Revelous and that's exactly... And that's what Coach Hayden is saying. He said, exactly. how, how was that a foul and wait, not a walk? Wait, 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 it can't be a shooting foul. Whoa, it can't be a shooting foul, Kurt. There was no team possession. That's correct. How is this a shooting foul? There's no team possession. And I'm getting an indication that's a one and one foul, but a one and one foul only matters. It's only a one and one foul if there is team possession. Yeah. If there's no team possession, correct. Then you can't shoot the one and one. Yeah. That's completely an incorrect. Yeah. Yeah. Call. Th these officials have missed the rule. 
Again, I'll give you a pass on some subjective stuff, but not knowing the rule book. This is not a one-in-one -one situation. Correct. The, and for those curious, team foul counts seven fouls against the Indians, two against the Wolves as they are within ten. Number three just should have picked up his third foul right then. Yep. Uh, they're letting him body. Yep. Good shot fake by Donovan, or <laughs> Dominic, I'm sorry. And so Dominic actually had a drive lane, but yes. in this communication, he also had an Indian sitting in his lap, so he Correct. actually couldn't attack that lane. And he saw it. He, he, before he had that ball, he knew that lane was there. Correct. Great, Great high-low pass. Yes. That's going to be last touched by the Wolves to the Indians. But Shawnee is selling out to guard the inside post play. I mean, just add, they're sticking nearly 10 sneakers in the paint right now. And I don't understand how the official is repeatedly telling number three not to do what he's doing and not calling the foul. At some point, you gotta, you got to call the foul. Yeah, I mean, you warn the young man once. Yeah. Uh, you don't warn him three times down the floor. Well, to be honest, at this level, Kurt, when I was officiating at the high school level, and even more so at the college level, there were no warnings. Correct. These kids have been playing since they were five, six, seven years old. They know better. If they're not coached up to know better, then you don't give them the benefit of the doubt. You penalize them and you make them learn the rules. Great job by Donovan to fight Excellent. Dominic. I'm going Excellent to get it right. Great job by Dom. Great job by Dom. He can't believe that he touched it last. And this game, Kurt, the tension in this building among these players... It's like a pressure cooker with the lid about to fly off of it. So if the officials Correct. don't get a handle on this, somebody's going to get hurt. The Wolves within two. They're on a run now. That's a, it's about an eight or nine point run, I think. Inside 60 to play in the third quarter. Trey has got big. He needs the ball. Nice inside outside right there. Rossi, the rhythm three, no good. Great nice job by Carter. by Carter. He draws the foul. Does he Excellent. finish the basket? He does. Count the Carter. basket for Carter Roman knows. Good job by the young man. Stayed with it. Read the dribble. Effort. I, that, that is a dying art. Yes. Uh, he timed that dribble perfectly. Knew exactly when the ball was going to be coming back up to the hand. Yep. Stepped in, took it, and, and it went, won. And went right to the rim with it. He didn't get fancy. He didn't shoot the jump shot. He didn't get, try to cross anybody over. He said, my skill set's better than yours. You're going to have to meet me at 10 feet. Correct. 51-40 to 40 on the back of a three-point play. And that three-point play was a pure effort play. Yes. You, that doesn't require talent. That doesn't require a tremendous amount of skill. It just requires you working your absolute tail off. That is correct. 25 seconds on the clock in County. El Reno leading by 11 as the third period draws down. Looks like Shawnee's going to be content to take the last shot. Yeah, this is a huge possession because you don't want to see it go below double digits. Yeah. And look at the trust Coach Hayden has in the true freshman guarding the shooter. And a great job by two freshmen to guard the shooter. And the, the stud shooter for Shawnee was guarded by two true freshmen. Yes. And missed a layup, a contested right. layup. Wasn't even close. Right. Now, poor block out defensively. Correct. Resulted in an easy putback. El Reno leads by nine after yeah. three. You're watching El Reno basketball. We'll be right back. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Team up with Pioneer iVideo and start streaming the most popular TV shows and movies from your favorite devices today. Download the iVideo app and start watching anywhere in your home using Pioneer Internet. Each package includes free high definition and cloud DVR features like video on demand, restart TV, and replay TV just in case you forget to record a program. Visit GoPioneer.com for more details and compatible devices. Some restrictions apply. As we prepare for the fourth quarter, the possession arrow in favor of the Indians. 
El Reno with a nine-point lead. 17 fouls for the Indians. Only three team fouls for the Wolves. It's interesting how when one player starts getting aggressive and the calls are not made, how the entire uh, complexion of a game can turn. Oh, absolutely. And he's still um, doing the same thing. Now there's another official underneath. Hasn't said anything to him. That is a great high-low pass right there. Down the and basket. a great job. And a great by job Craig. by, yes. And note, the official who banged the and one was the same official who'd warned him 47 times in Correct. a different position on the floor. Correct. But that's one of those areas where two coverage areas by the officiating crew can actually overlap. And the Shawnee coach saying, what happened? And the official said he just didn't get in a legal position. No. And if, for the folks at home, it looks like, it almost looks like that uh, call was delayed. We have a term for that. We call that a cadence whistle. If the primary official either doesn't see the foul or doesn't have the angle to make the call, the secondary official can reach in and, and call that foul as we saw here. So it's not actually a late whistle. He knew it was a foul. He gave his partner an opportunity to get it. When he didn't, he picked it up. So great job by the officiating crew. And that free throw looked fantastic. Oh, it he did. extended, hand in the cookie jar, as we say, when we're training young kids. Yep. Did a great job. That's a good call against James. Yes. Hand check. He rode him, stuck that, stuck that hand in the arc. Arc the dribbler. So that's going to be his, or the team's eighth foul. His, just the second team foul for the big, or second personal foul, sorry, for the big fella. Yeah, I'd like to see James take that drop step when he's defending. Yeah. And that's going to help him pick that angle off of the driver. 54-43, the Indian lead, 7.35 to play in. Unless El Reno goes on a big run here to really open this up, they're going to have to make free throws Correct. in the next seven and a half minutes if they want to come out of here. Good press break. Right back to James. Back to Dominic, who spots up top of the key. Can't get that one to go, but a great offensive rebound by Carter. Can't secure it. Great though. hustle by Carter right there. Good job by Excellent Evan. Excellent great job, job by, by Evan, yes. Excellent. Dominic stopped. He forced the pull-up. That was ultimately an air ball. Evan was in position for the offensive rebound, but unable to secure it. Correct. And good shutdown defense. And they're going to get Carter with a push. So it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one bonus situation. The Shawnee coach is just confused as can be about what's happening right now. I think he's arguing that that screen James set on that last offensive possession to start the press break was illegal and that he was outside his body frame. You know what? He's right. James yeah. had that. You're, you're limited. Your feet cannot exceed your shoulder width. The body Correct. frame is shoulder width from top of the head to the floor. Yep, that's right. And so James had his feet well beyond shoulder width apart. So the Shawnee's coach carries some merit. Yes. And the Wolves back to within nine. I think what's going to be fascinating now is to watch number three because he is going to, uh, he has three fouls. Yes. And a uh, heck of a player. Heck of a player. Orange is a great player. And, but we have three fouls, so he can't be near as aggressive uh, because of the... Uh, great job by James. The battle for that the overboard. Great job by James. Good job. Well executed inbounds. That's a, Absolutely. That's, that's a go-to for Rodney. He likes to coach Hayden. He wants to call that play. Good job by James not closing out on the shooter until the shot was a certainty. Right, that number five can shoot, but you James know. knows if I close all the way out, I get beat off the dribble. So good job by James. Forced him to commit to the shot, then challenging like, it cleanly. I like the fact, Zach, that Evan may have not been lighting the scoreboard up, but he is literally in on almost every play yes. and loose ball and touch, and he is working himself to death. And... Uh, the elder of the Roman Nose, and we are glad to have them. And as Grandfather Roman Nose came by and said, uh, you know, give a shout out to Darlington Schools. That's where those boys were. They played in the ORES, which is our rural state tournament and our rural association. So uh, we're glad to have them as El Reno Indians. Good young men and uh, quality people. James got himself open with a, with a pass fake. Can't finish it. And they're going to get a foul on who? Uh, they called that foul on James. James was standing there. The, the rebounder turned into James yeah. right into his hands. And uh, but foul. James got the foul. He's just got to shake it off. The Shawnee and that's what coach is telling him. The Shawnee coach is arguing for a technical foul. 
because of the spiked basketball, his kid spiked it. Yeah. His kid turned around and threw it into the pad at the base of the, the goal stanchion. Yes. So I'm not, I'm not sure he saw that play happen. And uh, look at James right yep. now. He went over to the official, and you've talked about this several times, with James being the captain, going over and uh, are, are addressing you, the yep. official and asking, what was it that I did? Yep. Great job by James right there. What do I need to do better? Yes. And James knows the answer is nothing. I did everything right. You got Correct. it wrong. But you have to argue your case. Nice rebound there by Dom. Good call. Excellent trap. No foul. Yeah. No reaching. And I, we've talked about that a million times about uh, if you just do your job on the trap, great job. will be fine. But an overthrow. And then Carter's going to get called for a foul. And Rodney can't believe that call. This official has decided that he's going to be the center point of this game. And apparently he thinks there's a trophy somewhere in a, in a coach's office that's got his name on it. Because he's just decided we're going to do this my way where you can all watch. Yeah. So that call against Evan, his fourth. Topai Evan. comes to the table. I suspect we're going to see him come in and let Evan or let uh, Carter sit down for a few minutes. So we have Carter's free throw shooting when we need it. And as they say at Rucker Park, the ball never lies. That yeah, told the, the truth and nothing but the truth. That's right. His second Shawnee free throw is up. Rattles that one down. And credit to Shawnee. This press has given the uh, Indians a little bit of trouble here, but Dominic Havern just attacks the press, says, I don't need your press. Let's get in the front court and run some offense. That's and you still by Dom right there. And you still see Shawnee selling out hard to guard the inside post play. They've, they've just been whipped in the post play tonight. James can't handle that one. Kurt, I get a feeling this one's slipping away from the Indians a little bit. Just get that... Get that feeling in the pit of your stomach that you just don't think the Indians can, are, are going to be able to hang on to this. I hope they are. And Coach Hayden's going to put them in a position to do so. Correct. But I just get the feeling this one might get away from them. Yeah. And number three, he's got Dominic hooked in the post. Yes. He had that right hand hooked around Dominic's yeah. hip. Dominic was trying to slip over the top, and he wouldn't let him. Good job by Dom. Yes. To make him give it up. Great job by Trey using the swim move. And a double team coming. Nice job. That's right. Good man-to-man -man defense. defense in this possession. Need to communicate. Need to work hard together. Good job by Dom. Run your lane, James. To the basket. Excellent goes great job. decision. Great decision. And, and credit James. He ran his lane. He stayed yes. wide. He forced that defender to be in two places Absolutely. at once. Absolutely. And that defender never did commit. Sort of like the option. Run right at him and make him make a play. Yes. And that's what happens when you give up offensive rebounds. That's a travel in that any rule book. Travel. That's a travel in any rule book. We got a chance to advance it here. Nice Good job by Evan. By Evan. Go layup. Good job, Evan. And Excellent job by Evan, and again, that's what I'm saying. He's not scoring a whole lot of points, but he is making every play to help us be victorious. That's the fourth foul on number 21. The fifth team foul. And to Shaw's credit, since halftime, when he picked up his third foul right before half, he's been on the floor and done a great job defensively. That's made easy by the fact that the officials just sort of open and close their eyes randomly and make decisions, too. Yes. Yep. I agree with that. Got to make free throws. We've got to make free throws. I actually have the score off. I, I had 56-56, but it looks like it's actually 58-54 in favor of the Indians. So let me fix that before our folks at home have a heart attack. <laughs> now, who'd they get here? Did they get mad for that? They did. Are you kidding me? At this point, you're going to have to go stand over in the corner to avoid a contact foul, apparently. And you know what? I, I'm it, kind of speechless on well, that one. You know, I, I don't know what happened. I thought it was just a good rebound. and 
Well, I did too. And I, I'll be honest, Kurt, I don't know much about this Shawnee team, but they may have spent some time in acting classes with the theater department. They've got the real nice performing arts center next door. Yes. So they may be putting on a uh, Oscar-worthy performance for all we know. And the official right there missed a foul. Number three cannot shove a guy all the way underneath the goal on a, an, uh, on a rebound on a free throw. Absolutely. 55-58, the Indians lead by three. Four ten to play in the fourth. Indians trying to weather the Shawnee Storm. Good hesitation move to James in the... That one almost got away from him, but a good offensive rebound. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds because, of course, they're going to say he stepped out that of bounds. That was excellent hustle, though, by both Matthew and Evan. Uh, they kind of bumped into one another, yeah. knocked each other out of bounds, but excellent pursuit on the offensive glass. I think I stunt to make him pick it up, yep. Three fifty to play. El Reno leading by three. And credit Shawnee. They 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 they've told El Reno if you're going to beat us, you're not going to do it in the post. Correct. Good job and break and holding on to that ball against the pressure of the Wolf press. Although you you're not going to be able to convince me there wasn't contact there, Kurt. Correct. A good call. He drug it. Good call. Rossi's checking in for Dom. I suspect as a probably a free throw situation. And Rossi still doesn't look like he's at full strength. He's still a little bit tender on that leg. I don't right. Don't know what it was. He went back. Looks like so he he went back and it looks like he either taped or retaped that left ankle because there's some ankle tape over the top of the sock. He wasn't taped before, so it looks like they've taped him. And apparently the uh, kid from Shawnee um, has the most difficult laces to tie in the world. He's been down there for the better part of 60 seconds trying to tie the tennis shoe. We may have to throw him a roll of uh, athletic tape and just let him tape it down to his shoe at this point. Yep, and a good call. So they're going to charge a timeout to Shawnee. I believe. Nope, maybe not. They should have. They should have. They should have. It doesn't take four minutes to tie a tennis shoe. No. My three-year-old can tie a tennis shoe faster than that young man tied his. Yeah. And Coach Hayden is calling the fact, calling one official, uh, uh, yeah, to, yeah, to no avail, yeah. to let him know that he charged them with a timeout. And, uh, and then decide, oh, never mind. Yeah. And number three just put two hands in Donovan, or Dominic's chest. And, and good job by Carter for hanging on to that ball. Excellent job. That, that's going to be the fifth foul on number 21, so his afternoon's going to be complete. It has always been a bewilderment to me how a team that full court presses reaches and grabs can come back from a 17-point deficit and the other team hardly ever set a foot on the free throw line. Oh, yeah, for sure. But such is such a, the so way it goes. As I mean, it goes sometimes, I suppose. We did that to Anadarko. Yeah. So right now, we have just got to right the ship, calm down. And We're it, up by one. And if El Reno can draw one more foul, they're going to get chances at the Correct. free throw line. And into the front court comes Topai. Against pressure, and they're going to call excellent. zero for a block. Yep. That is an excellent call, finally. Yes. And you see, you'll notice the Shawnee coach is not upset about that call. No. He's coaching his defense. You know, normally, if that's, a, if that's a 50 50 call or something somebody disagrees with, that coach is going to be arguing his case. Mm -hmm. But the Shawnee coach but had already my, moved on from it. Here's my problem with that. Here's my only problem with that. You call it on that young man, but there has been one that has been doing it repeatedly for two quarters, and you still have yet to call the foul on them. And yep. we missed a free throw. Yep. We have got to start making our free throws. Especially down the stretch. This official, every time he blows his whistle, he looks yes. like he's coming off the blocks at a sprint. He takes four or five hearts. I mean, he's, he's trying to draw everybody's eyeballs in the building to look at him when he does that. He wants Correct. everybody to know he's here. 
Yes. I never wanted anybody to know I was in the building. Right. I wanted to sneak in the in and out the back door. And nobody was ever knew I was there. And in the first half, that's pretty much the way it was. Yeah. I mean, you hardly even knew there were officials on the floor. This this official decided. You know what? It's more exciting when people get to look at me. So I want them to look at me. Yes. And the good news is Coach Hayden gets the opportunity to evaluate these officials. In fact, he has an, an obligation to evaluate these officials within Correct. 24 hours of the contest. And all of, that, all of those evaluations go into playoff assignments. So I don't suspect we're going to see very many of these officials working deep into, uh, into March. Correct. Isn't it interesting now that all the slapping hacking is over, uh, he backs them off and no full court press. Yes. Two and a half to play, El Reno trails by but one. As you and I have talked, if they don't call it... It's not a foul. It's not a foul. Good job by Dominic fighting through some contact to come back and to the I ball. And I cannot believe what's going on at low post, and they're still allowing it. Yeah. James is absolutely working his tail off. And number three is just throwing elbows and throwing bodies and hips and glue to him. He's leaning. He's laying on him like he's a chaise lounge. He is. Set a trap right there. I mean, that number, who is that? Number, uh, the, the point guard, number five, number three, was laid back on James' leg like James was a pool lounger. Timeout, Shawnee. It's going to be a 60-second. We'll take it with him. You're watching El Reno Basketball. We'll be right back. number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. Two oh four to play, and this one's gotten away. The Indians had a big lead. And Shawnee's worked it down and back on top by one, 59-58. Looks like Shawnee's going to be content to force El Reno to guard them. And smart move there as they go to a uh, modified 1-4, not a 1-4 flab, sort of a staggered 1-4 look. Great job. See if El Reno can come I up with a loose ball. Yes. They can't, but they've got to... Had a chance to trap in the corner. Correct. And credit the Wolves with that finish. That's a tough finish. He was fading. Nice fading. job by Morris yep. right there. Fading away over the top of traffic. Just hold your composure. Working the ball. Find your man. The official wanted to call a foul. Put half a whistle on it. And then quit blowing the whistle, so the players stopped playing when they heard the whistle. Correct. There, there's no way to save face when you do your job that poorly. And the player, literally, number 22, ran under Trey on that shot. Yep. I'm just thankful the young man was able to come down without injury. Oh, absolutely. That's how you, that's how you turn ankles. That's how you tear up knees. Yes. And that may put this one out of reach. Although we've said that before. Yes. James says, get out of my way. I'm going to go shoot the ball. And Coach Hayden begging for a foul says, what else does my player have to do? Yeah, I think this one's over, Kurt. 30 seconds left. We're going to have to make some threes or get some get some help by the get some help with the, and they're going to get a charge. Yeah. 
And if I'm Rodney Hayden, it is worth the technical foul right here. I, yeah. I mean, he is the old, that official is the only person in the building who saw it that way. That's uh, James' fourth foul. And we know that because both of his partners turned and looked at each other. Yeah. They were, they were positioned to go shoot free throws. Yeah. Excellent play by Carter. But back to, back to uh, El Reno comes the ball. Great job by Carter. A good read. This, the deficit seven. Not out of reach, but at the very least a, a, a three-possession game. And James is going to go to the free throw line to get his chance. And again, the official who says, turn the bright lights on, I'm out here, boys, decided he was going to put a whistle on that. And to be honest, of all the bad calls, that's not a foul. Yeah. I mean, credit Shawnee. They stripped him clean. Right. James knocks the first one down. You never want to miss free throws, but every coach somewhere in their playbook has the intentional miss. Mm -hmm. And it's there for a reason. Right. You, it's hard to normally just get into that from a call from the bench. You normally, you're normally into that out of a timeout. Most, most coaches don't even have a name for that play. Correct. You can't call it orange or twist or five. You know, there's no name for it other than intentional miss. So you normally set that up coming out of a timeout. And Dom's going to get called for the foul. I believe that's his fifth good foul. good foul. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No problem with that. That's his fourth. I don't know, like the team's 52nd or something at this point. All, all fouls are going to shoot free throws except for the offensive variety. We've had one of the offensive variety, and it was a made-up call. He just decided, what the heck, I haven't called this one yet. Let's go ahead and send this one. Right. And I think a, a big difference, and not for all, the, for all the criticism of the officials, El Reno's missed a bunch of free throws. And, yeah, Shawnee, and, it, and it hurt yeah. when uh, Carter picked up his fourth foul yeah. and had to go to the bench. Yeah, it did. So Shawnee made shots when it mattered. They made some great adjustments at halftime. I don't know that El Reno's had more than maybe eight points in the paint in the second half. And, and we've, we've probably got a bucket full of turnovers. Yes. Which probably not uh, enough. Dom to, did a good job yeah. there. And uh, uh, James was in position for... The offensive board, and Dom just should have gone ahead and, and shot that right there. Boy, that, that's a late switch by the scorekeeper. The clock should start when the player I, touches the ball inbounds. He was fouled immediately, and 1.3 ran off. As fast as I talk, I can say a whole paragraph in 1.3. So it should be about 14.2, 14.1, but instead it's 13 even. You know, whatever adjustments Shawnee made in the second half, highly effective. El Reno hasn't been able to score in the paint. They didn't get any help from the officials, but they also didn't have open shots. In the first half, we had a bunch of uncontested baskets in the paint. So credit to Shawnee for whatever, whatever adjustments they made. Right. And although El Reno's going to lose by 7, 8, 9, 10, somewhere around in there, it's, it's actually much closer than it appears. This, this nine-point game. And the Shawnee students section chanting, hey, 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 goodbye, in the loser's bracket, which is sort of interesting. We generally generally chant, uh, chant that when you're playing for the championship. But, Correct. you know, for all we know, that may be the standard of excellence in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Yeah. I don't know. As yeah. I say that, we're surrounded by state championship banners behind us. Zero's on the clock. El Reno's going to drop this one by nine. And... A really strong outing by the Indians in the first half. And then a strong turnaround by the Wolves to win it at the end. And a game that when the first half was officiated fairly reasonably, in the second half the wheels just came off the bus. To the point, I don't know if you see this, the, the, the officials didn't even leave through the same door, Kurt. Two, right. officials, two officials went down the Shawnee locker room tunnel. One official went down the El Reno locker. They didn't even, that's how frustrated they are as a crew. They didn't even leave the floor together. There was one of the three officials that I have watched officiated for many years. He officiated when I was at Cashin and uh, as assistant coach of the Cashin girls. He is a phenomenal 
official, and I don't think he made two calls the entire night. No. Because he was being overridden. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, again, you have to work together uh, as well as a team, as a officiating crew. You also have to see that. And uh, when, you, when you walk out of the gymnasium, you should never be talking about the officiating. But to no. Shawnee's credit, they did a great job. With a comeback. Oh, yeah. Uh, they were frustrated. They were down by 17, put on full court press. And that's just something that uh, Coach Aiden will have to look at the young players on our squad and say, okay, what happened? And what are we going to do the next time this happens to you? Oh, absolutely. And we've got, we've got another opportunity absolutely. in February. Yes. We're going to come right back here. You yes. and I are going to sit at the exact same table and mm -hmm. have a very similar version of the conversation we've been having for the last hour and a half. Yes. Folks, we're going to take a few hours off. Ladies don't play for another four hours. It's 3 o'clock. Ladies don't play till 7. So we're going to take a break. The consolation or the, uh, yeah, the consolation girls game. No, the third place game. Sorry, third place girls game between uh, Sepulpa, Sepulpa and McAllister. I actually think they're going to clear the gym to clean it like they did yesterday. Oh, okay. I think is what's happening because uh, the, the uh, Sepulpa – Players aren't yet in uniform, so the next game will be the Sepulpa game. So girls won't play till 7, so we got a little bit of a break. We're going to step away, and we will have a new stream key set up. So stay tuned in to ElRenoIndians.tv as we approach the 7 o'clock hour for the ladies' game for all of us here at El Reno, uh, Indians TV. Kurt Parker, myself, Cole Owen, our jack-of-all-trades, our cameraman, our engineer, our technical support specialist. For all of us here, we thank you very much for tuning in. And we'll see you in just a little bit for the championship game between El Reno and Mustang. 